Hello and welcome to my extremely unorganized video. You feel free. I'm here with, I'm teaching a student this week. Um, young chap. Well, anyone younger than me is young and come all the way from Australia just to be here. Um, I've started the video a little bit prematurely, so uh, I'm starting again. Imagine I've just done that. And all I did was mix a bit of um, Payne's Grey, Royal Blue, Red Ochre. Uh, what else? That's it, really, I think. And uh, I'm just trying to show that a sky can be any colour. And uh, it really can be. It can be green if you want. And I've talked about green skies before, but let's just put something on here that's got a bit of life in it. So this is going to. This is day one of two days. So. And uh, my student's name is Mark, who also comes to my Zoom classes. And um, so if you haven't been to one of my Zoom classes, maybe now is the time to book. And um, yeah, he decided that he'd be um, up for going for the real thing. So let's, let's hope it goes well. So yeah, Mark's going to paint probably tomorrow. And uh, I don't know about today. What have we got? I don't know. Possibly. It depends how quickly I can do this. But uh, I might video Mark painting with me interrupting every now and then. That could be really annoying, couldn't it? So that that's the sort of colour that I put on there, as you can see. It's, a, it's a, an interesting colour. Um, and what I'm going to do now is just sort of figure out where the horizon's going to be. So let's just have some white across here. Don't do anything that feels slightly final, because nothing is final at this stage. Keep the brush moving as lightly as you can. And also keep out the way of the thing, because I'm sure everybody out there is sick to death of looking at my shoulder. OK, so that doesn't get much looser than that. OK, so let's see, what should we do with the... Um, what should we do with the land? Well, maybe I'll just leave leave the land for now, because the land's actually going to be quite easy. Um, so I'll just sort of finish the sky, and then we'll pull the land into it uh, a bit, a little bit later on. So let's have... Um, I'm not actually consciously thinking about... Uh, you might find this weird, actually. I don't... When I added that extra bit of white to this, OK, that wasn't a design decision. It's just something for my arm to do while I'm thinking about what I'm going to say next. So, uh, and it does sound crazy, but uh, it, it works anyway for me. One of the things that you can do in a painting, which would always help, and that is to keep it as fresh as possible. So when you put a colour, if I put a light colour on this darkish colour, although it's not as dark as things will get, when I put the colour on, like so, once it's there, take the brush away. Don't do this because that will just give you a spot that is neutral and you don't necessarily want that. So I'll just show you that again. If you want something to twinkle, get the twinkle and then move on somewhere else. Even if it's not finished, it gives you time to think about that, which just happens to look like a young bird with its beak wide open. So we'll just de-beak that thing. So keep your contrast. There's another bit there. Okay, a little bit there, a bit here, a touch there maybe. But don't destroy the darks that you've already got in. Otherwise, there's no point putting them in in the first place. OK, so um, up the top here, let's have a slightly cleaner colour. And I bought some brushes the other day, um, which I don't normally buy uh, this sort of brush. I'll just dangle them in front of the camera. But I was painting a windmill, and these are, these are just going to be windmill brushes from now on. You probably won't see me use them for a while, or possibly not even in this lifetime. Unless I decide to do another windmill. OK, so a um, little bit of white. Let's just put a bit more white just up there. Just a few patches. Doesn't have to mean anything. And um, one thing I, that I'll, I'll tell you what I'm not doing, because it's always good to know what I'm not doing. I'm not doing this. OK, um, I'm not painting a door. I'm trying to paint a picture, and I'm trying to get some kind of feeling into the paint. Because if the painting doesn't look right, 
at least the texture of the paint can look interesting. So let's just take the edge off the top of that. There. See, there's no absolutely no anguish anywhere in any of my paintings. Well, the subject might have anguish and drama, but the way that I apply the paint basically is just uh, free and loose and don't work on one spot thinking I'll get that bit right and then I'll paint this bit and get that right. Don't do it, don't do it like that. You should always paint the picture as a whole. So a little bit there, leave it, go off, think about something else. Not literally, I mean just move on another part of the painting. Let's think about a, a, a really bright spot there. We can build that up. See the brush has got paint on it, but um, you can you can add white to that colour, like so. So you've still got white on the tip of that now. Uh, and if you're careful about how you do it, you can make just the white work. And I'll just show you something really quickly in this area, just to give you an idea of what that will end up like. So this bit of white here, uh, to give you an idea of how that can be quickly made to look good. And of course, the sooner you can make something look good, uh, the better you will feel about the painting. So you know, there's some instant cloud. I'm sort of a bit a bit premature with this because I I haven't got the entire sky on there, but you can see the effect that, that instantly makes. Pretty neat that, isn't it? When you think about it. Um, let's see what how, how else we can make it interesting. I'm going to. Right, sorry, I cut there. Right. So now let's get some. Um, Let's get some blue. Just happen to have some royal blue lying around here. Very thin paint. Don't build the paint up into great big layers because you'll be fighting it forever. Just get some blue on there, nice and thin, like so. The advantage to putting the paint on thinly is that you can either paint on that without mixing up a mountain of paint, or you can make a light cloud in it just by pushing away the paint with a piece of paper. Okay, so you've got several options. When you do that, just to give you an idea, you can then take something like brown, just loosely add it to the area, and then wipe it again, and you get a little bit of heat in the cloud. Bad effect. So, but that's early days yet. So let's just um, reminder to myself. <laughs> Put that back on there in a minute. So a bit of um, royal blue. Right. So I've added a little bit of um, medium to this. The medium is um, basically linseed oil. Uh, it's got a, a, a touch of genuine turpentine in it, uh, not not white spirit or turpentine substitute. So funnily enough, I can take the smell of real turpentine, but white spirit, it's just, uh, I find it obnoxious. And of course, it's not awfully good for you, I think. OK, so up here, I think we'll keep the blue sky that side. This is going to get really uh, thunderous and full of treachery up there, I think. Let's have a, a little, so this is the light side, let's have a little bit of light. There must be thousands of those hairs. You get to a point when you're painting a picture where you, you'll get a hair like that and maybe you'll carefully put it in the bin for a while, then eventually it's like, throw it, you know, just get it out of the way. So let's just have a little bit of light sky there. And that side is going to get really turgid. Good word, turgid. And I did spot a, my first bristle there. Oh, there it is. Let's get that. Okay, so let's pull a little bit of, a little bit more blue down here. Don't be careful though. You're not painting clouds at the moment. You're painting something that can be misidentified as a cloud. So this, this area up here, so I've got blue on my brush. This is actually my smoothing brush, so I think I'll try and keep that one slightly in more control. Um, I've got this one, which has got everything on it. And 
it's even got the obligatory cat hair. Right, so let's get some uh, Payne's Grey, some red ochre, and uh, I don't think we'll put green in it yet. That's just, uh, that's too red. A little bit more Payne's Grey. Okay, that's a little bit of a shadow there too. Now this, I'll just, um, I'll smooth that very quickly just to show you that um, how quickly you can make a nice shadow in a cloud. Nice, this one. You can make a shadow in a cloud quickly without fussing around. Just by... You might be right. You know you get days when things don't quite go right. I was just using the wrong brush, but I've got the right brush now. But it's, uh, it's still okay. All I've done is put a few streaks in it by using the wrong brush, so let's, we can take them away just by using the correct brush. And all I wanted to do is just give a bit of roundness to that cloud quickly. And it also sort of puts it in your face. I've got to, there are certain things that I've got to stop saying. One is that, oh, that's interesting. And the other one is use a bit of oil, but not too much. What's the other one that irritates the heck out of me? This is easy. Yeah, that's it. Well, it doesn't actually irritate me, but there have been people that said, well, you keep saying it's easy and anyone can do it. Why can't I do it? Well, you're not trying hard enough. I don't know. It is, uh, I, mean, I suppose if you do something like this for over half a century, something's going to happen, you know? like um, a bit like riding a bicycle. Once you know, you know. And I think it just gives you the confidence to not care. Once you don't care, things start to um, fall into place. Let's have a little bit of dark just there too. Now, you may think, well, why are you putting dark there and then light there? There is a reason. If I put if I put dark here, when I put light on it, it'll exaggerate the light. Because you can't show the light unless you have some dark next to it. A few little patches just there. Let's have one here. Just there. That'll be the underside of a cloud. There. Okay, so there's some white bits showing which are just the board. It's not white paint, but that, it won't stay like that. Nothing, always keep in your mind that nothing is set in stone. Everything can be changed. It's nice and dark. And I think over here, the sky is going to get darker. And then go into a blue. Now, if, this, if there was too much paint on that, if I touch it with a brush, you see, I would be spreading paint everywhere. There's a few tiny streaks there, which you may not even be able to see. But because the paint uh, amount is, is kept low, you don't get bogged down. And also, the, the other thing, it can, uh, which can be quite useful, is when you get the brush, what I call tuned, in other words, I can make this brush do something by leaning on it a bit but I can also use that same brush quickly to make a tone so as you see there I can sort of put a hint of a tone on the ground so that it's there's a bit of light catching it now if it looks okay then don't feel that you need to change it and paint those little streaks of light that's you know that's not what painting is about um, Possibly a bit more for you in Victorian times, because they did think, you know, that every bit of the canvas had to be covered. But uh, that's that's all changed. And um, so, yeah, if it works, leave... And it worked. Sorry, if, it, if you're trying to get something to work and you can get it to work using the minimum, then um, just imagine how light, how easy life could be. OK. Now, the other, one of the other things about skies, the more facets that you have um, 
you uh, will create a feeling of expanse. Lots and lots of angle changes and light spots and cha light changes, all kinds of stuff like that, um, will add size to your painting. If you simplify the sky too much, it just brings everything too close to you. It needs to be there. And the reason I put that there is because there was a line that was straight. No straight lines in, in skies. Although I must tell you this, I, a few years ago I was making a video and I said something like that about uh, no straight lines in skies. So what happens after the lesson, I go off to drive up to the next village to get some food. And what do I do? I look at the sky and what do I see in the sky? Straight lines. So you don't have to listen to me. But sometimes it sometimes it works, and the other thing is that when you paint trees, I said, don't paint little lollipops. When I say lollipops, I mean you know a trunk with a round bit on top. Don't do that. And then again, same thing. Probably the same road. I turn a corner. No one noticed it before. And right on the top of the horizon, bang in front of me, is a lollipop tree. But they're not all like that. They're, You've got to um, you've got to do what looks right. You don't have to actually paint what is right. So you, what, what you have to do is paint what looks right. So if something looks off balance, there's a reason. So I'm just going to get a little bit, a few dabs on a brush of white paint in a few places where I think I might need it. Half shut your eyes as you do it, it simplifies what you're looking at, simplifies the tones. Some, do you know, I, I used to, uh, for the, for, I don't know how many people I was teaching here before um, the lockdown. Um, I had a year where there was 35 or 36 people. So it was a busy year and I, I forgot to warn people that when you look at me, if you're watching me paint, I'm not falling asleep. <laughs> I'm half closing my eyes every now and then so that I can see the important bits in the painting without being overwhelmed with detail. Because I want to I want to create the detail. So if I if I squint my eyes, it simplifies what you're looking at, and you can see where bits are missing. You just get you just get a feel for it without without overdoing it. So small, small clouds on the horizon. Nothing, no, no repetitive shapes. Once you get repetitive shapes in there, it'll start to look slightly amateurish. Okay, so that's ready for blurring again and but before I do that there's one thing that I always like to paint in skies and that is fragmented clouds so this cloud coming up here I want to, I want to get the feeling of wind in the sky there will be bits where the cloud is broken up and it's just drifting like so can either get it can either get slightly bigger or smaller doesn't matter but it can look good if you can bring the sky over your head. So maybe if I just sort of have a little, a little bit of interest just about there. So that's, that's quite a, a way away, but it's blowing back toward us. Let's have a little bit down there, a couple of bits there. Right, so I'm going to give that a going with the um, smoothing brush. Okay, so there's some nice, um, tones and variations of colour in there. Brown, brown in a sky. Some people really have trouble believing that, but you can, you can get away with almost anything. And in fact, I'm going to probably put some Japanese red in that in a minute. But if you put Japanese red into something like this, 
uh, it will immediately mix with the blues usually and turn into a sort of very really dark mauve or purple. So again, you know, the importance of not getting bogged down in lots of paint. This is just a thin film of paint. Now, if there's anything that needs to be re-sculpted, like some of these here, you can just touch it with the corner of your brush and just sort of soften them down a bit. If I, you see, if I wanted to soften down these, these little white clouds and I just kept going over it like that, I would make everything uh, slightly muted. By using the corner, just break up the bit you want to break. And any shapes in there that don't look right, you know, I can see sort of weird shapes going on there. So let's just break that a little bit and that there. And the other thing, if you want distant clouds on the horizon, just use your finger. Bit of white paint. And you can sort of do things like this quite easily. Quite effective. Got to keep your eye on it so that you don't pick up too much paint. So I've got a whole load of blue on my finger there. So just clean it off and add a little fresh bit. And of course you can do this. You can just drag through it like that. So small clouds getting bigger, bigger. Perspective in skies. It's not a great mystery. So I like the shape that um, this particular finger produces on here. So I'm just going to put a few little clouds that are catching the light there. Let's take that one from there, I think. Another cat hair bites the dust. So now um, here I might zoom in. I won't zoom the camera in. I'll zoom in when I'm editing it, but um, in there. So if I get a little bit of a tone, in other words, I don't have clean white on my finger, it's turned into an interesting grey, that will work quite nicely on something that is already pale. So I could put that just there and it's unbelievably subtle. But when this is finished and varnished, you'll see it. It'll, it'll sort of bounce out a bit. So let's see if I can do that again just there. See, it's multifaceted clouds. Let's have another one there. In fact, I might do some dark clouds now because it depends on where the sun is uh, coming from. But you get broken up white clouds, but you can also get broken up dark clouds too. And don't be don't be precise. So another bit there. Now this this is not a big painting. This is much smaller than I would normally paint. Normally I paint um, eighty by sixty centimeters, which on the screen now is um, that in inches. So. Uh, the thing is not to go too mad with this. Just, you know, put it in, put enough in to catch the interest of the viewer. Look for things that aren't sitting right. You see, now that shape there isn't describing the light hitting the clouds the way it is here. This is much more, this is more successful. The light's obviously coming down across that way. So there's no real reason why that would be there. What the hell? Time to throw this brush away. So I just sort of turn it so the light is coming on this side, and then we have a bit of a shadow. A little shadow under there. I'll be I'll be smoothing this down in a minute, and then I'll be working on the landscape, which um, 
I'm going to emulate, not copy, uh, a friend of mine, um, James Norton. Go and look at his uh, paintings. Put in the search engine, no, uh, type in James Norton artist. And that's Norton is, uh, I'll put Norton, I'll put his name on the screen anyway. Um, but I really like his landscapes. And uh, I've been looking at one with uh, Mark here, and uh, we decided we'd do something similar. So it's not a copy, it's just the feel. So the one there, a little bit of light just there. You must remember to talk full volume. I've noticed lately in some of my videos I mumble a bit. Well, the only thing I can say about that is... Let's have a little shadow just there. So this, when you get to this stage, this is, the set, this is what I call the safe stage. Um, it's very difficult to do anything completely wrong. Because it, it's, uh, it's sort of in control. Oh yes, I'm going to add some pink. Once I uh, do, I let me think. How am I going to do this? Right, the first thing I'm going to do is smooth it a bit more. And um, when I've smoothed it, I'll put some pink on it using um, titanium white and Japanese red. And then I'll do the uh, the actual landscape part or the salad. This is the dressing, that's the salad. And don't forget when you're doing this, it's it's like an aeroplane coming into land. Don't sort of hit it and then move. It's got to be a glancing blow and you have to turn the brush each time. Right, so I think that is quite close to being it with the sky, for, at least for a minute. Quite pleased with that. Doesn't take long. I don't know how long I've been painting, but um, you can produce a sky like that really quickly. And it's worth practicing because, you know, as I said, I think, well, I've said it in many videos, found something I don't like. Um, when you when you get the painting to a certain state and you know it looks good it will make you paint better because there's nothing better than um, encouragement um so yeah small brush but um it's sort of in scale to the painting. Okay, so uh, I won't show you the painting that um, this is based on because it's, it's going to be quite different. But let's just see what happens when we do this. Now you may think it's going to be a bay or a seascape and that this is water, but it isn't. This is actually sky still. And I'm going to do that trick of blending the land into the sky. So this sky here will pr probably become a lot darker. So at the moment, I'm going to just sort of invent a few shapes here. This is the bit that seems to interest people, where you flick the brush and it produces formations. So over here we'll have another we'll have more dark. So it's going to be like, I think it's going to be a strong light, which I will um, exaggerate on these bits of white cloud just through here so that you're aware that the light is coming down and hitting the ground there. So everything else around that could be quite dark so this 
on the light side of the painting here, I'm going to just take the land into the sky. Now, without really doing anything, you can make things appear in the landscape just by adding pressure, taking pressure off, slowing down. The slower that I move the brush, the more paint comes off the brush. The faster I move the brush, the less paint comes off. So you see the perspective is just, it's all, it's all a trick, really. Exactly, the illusion of detail. So there, that's that bit there, it sort of gives you an idea of what you can do, but it's not quite what I wanted. I'm going to take the land up a bit into the sky, so it's going to come up here. Now, if you're doing this, if you're, going to, if you're painting along with me and you put a mark on, you think, ah, look at this, look at that dreadful mistake just there. That great big dark shape, which you'll never get rid of. You'd have to wipe it off, start again. Well, actually, you, you don't. What you do is you turn it into something. Go over it a few more times. This is the, one of the things about painting into the sky. Uh, imagine how hard it would be to paint the entire landscape and then have to get a little brush and go along and paint where the sky and the land meet. That's just uh, unbelievably tedious. And it's just, well, it's, how can I put it? I suppose it's, um, you could compare it to classical violin next to jazz violin. This is the jazz version. In other words, you get the feeling over quickly rather than being precise on every note. Think of it as a piece of music, maybe. Of course, this is coming from someone who's totally not musical. And I, I could add a little public health warning here. If ever I start to sing, best thing you can do is hide. Lock your dogs up because they'll be howling. So who am I to talk about music? So there we are. Look, see the land is disappearing into the distance there. That's quite effective. And, you know, don't be afraid to leave the odd little bit of dark. There's a little dark bit there. But if I just sort of had a little bit of light just underneath it, just that little spot, your brain will start to make things. It will turn that into, a, a, I don't know, a dark bunch of trees or something. So let's take this and fade this. I'm, not, I'm still thinking that I'll bring some dark clown onto that, but in a moment. So here, the more I push it into the blue, the more you get it like a heat haze. Now, by putting all this flat effect across here, I can add things later to that. I'll show you that in a moment. So let's assume that that little bit above this darker bit here that I'm putting on, it's just very slightly darker there. Okay, so I want I want a hint of a few little tiny trees over there, but of course, you know, imagine this is my only brush, okay? Poor starving artist, take note. If you want to help a poor starving artist, uh, go and look at my Patreon page. And you can you can help me eat. But more importantly, and I've said this before, you can help my cat eat. Oh, my wife likes a sandwich every now and then. Anyway, joking apart. So this is imagine this is the only brush I've got. And uh, how am I going to put detail in there? You know, tiny little bits of detail. Well, I do actually have some other brushes, but um, it's amazing what you can do, just literally. By doing things like that. The trick is to put the mark on. I wonder if that's even picking up. I will zoom in a bit. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to put in the illusion of some little tiny trees over here in the distance. The good thing about using a brush like this is that it's actually quite difficult to, to make a line, a small, thin sort of line. So what I do 
is I, I, I try to give the illusion that there's something going on just by touching the board and then smearing the, the what is getting painted by the underside of the row. I call it the negative side. That's the positive. That's the negative. The negative is the bit you can't see. So I can put on a, a line of little dots almost and then take out the underside of it. Oops, that was a mistake, but it doesn't matter. It's all highly fixable. I'm not sure that is, but it looks like a fish. But there's some quite interesting bits of landscape that start to appear over here. And of course, the other thing I can do is to get a piece of paper and introduce some light to the, um, to the ground. So it's already got a light bit here. Now when I look in my viewfinder this all looks quite interesting. This could be a building on the horizon, uh, you know, it could be a tree, don't know. But where the light seems to work, I might exaggerate it just a touch. So as we've got a dark, well it's not dark, it's more like a, you know, bit of a tone there. Just underneath that, let's just add a little bit of a little bit of light there. So what I'm not doing, again, I'm not consciously thinking that I'm going to paint a field with a bit of light catching it. Uh, I'm just fiddling around with paint until it looks like something. So I'm taking away the, um, the anguish. Let's, uh, let's do this uh, other thing, which is always quite useful. And that's just just to put a line across the landscape like that. Because something in your brain has said, oh, there's a path. And you don't have to do anything to it, just leave it. The other thing that works quite well is to add even more distance with light hitting objects in the distance. So for instance, this area here where that light blue is, so I'll try not to touch the, the um, pretend details. Try and add some light hitting a hill beyond this hill. And that's this is actually quite fun. All you do is you just sort of put some lines in it, like so. So suddenly, going by my um, viewfinder, I get, I get the feeling that there's something hitting another hill over there. Now, originally I said that this blue was sky, but actually I don't think I want that. I think I'm going to add more of these. Let's have one over there. A couple of them. So beyond this ridge, there's also a bit more landscape. It's neat, isn't it? Just so easy to... Oh, I said that. I'll have to cut that out. It's not easy, in case I forget to cut it out. It's incredibly difficult, and the only way to learn this, really, is to join up for one of my... <laughs> uh, you've got to promote, you know that, don't you? Uh, sign up for one of my Zoom classes. They're a right laugh, I think. Are they a right laugh? Oh, yeah. yeah. They're a bit of a giggle, aren't they? Yeah. Inspirational. That's why I'm here. Well, exactly. Who else would get on an aeroplane... In Australia, exactly. Just just for a few hours. Seventeen hour flight. Yeah, I'm impressed. I have to say. So the the landscape starting to come together, and looking in my viewfinder, I quite like this effect here. There's some quite interesting land shapes coming down there. But I'm gonna. Uh, this is going to be quite dark. Now I won't put anything that remotely looks like detail because I've got to put another colour in here. But I'm just sort of plotting out in my mind a little bit. what it could look like. So here, what am I going to do in there? Right, I've got, I've got several ideas. The original has a sort of like a chalky um, or sandstone uh, looking area, but I think, I think it's actually sunlight. So I, what I think I'll do, I'm going to mix, I don't usually do this, I'm going to mix um, white with sap green, which gives you a sort of milky green. Don't forget, by the way, if ever you're painting grass in the distance, uh, it doesn't contain more yellow as it gets further away. It actually contains more white. 
So because grass in the distance gets paler, it doesn't get yellower. So if you paint yellow grass in the distance, you stop painting grass and it turns into a cornfield or a something else. Right, so this milky green, let's just put that there. Quite interesting how it's quite similar to that, but that'll change in a minute. So I'm going to put that there, just enough paint for me to actually uh, push with a piece of paper. Not worried about that edge at the top either. So all I'm going to do is get some paper and then just see what happens, because I know it can't go wrong. Why would it go wrong? Now that's quite interesting. Okay, it'll be more interesting um, when I stop saying interesting. It'll be more intriguing uh, when I do what comes around the edge. So this is just a quick way of showing either a change in texture or light. I quite, like, I quite like the fact that it's that strange greeny colour. In fact, I'm going to put a bit more of that on there. Let's just go to there, I think. Okay. I don't want that anymore. And of course, there's hardly any paint on that. So you could paint other things on onto that surface, which I will be doing, um, without getting bogged down. Okay, so back to a bit of sap green with red ochre and Payne's grey. Basically, dark green. And I'm not particularly adding uh, any oil to that. So let's, um, let's start to make this look even more fascinating. So let's have some contrast along the edge there. And a few shapes that don't mean anything. It's just going to be something. Have something there that's slightly bigger, slightly higher up. So now I want to bring this edge closer to us. So this is where we start putting things that, as I often say, could be interpreted as tree tree lines. The odd, you see, the thing I like about these bristles is that there are several rogues there that aren't conforming and they're producing the odd line, which I actually quite like. So I'm not going to try and fix those. I don't know what they are, but they look as though they should be there. This edge here, what should I do with that? Good question. Absolutely no idea. Um, it's going to introduce a little bit more oil into that, or medium. You could do it with oil or the medium, doesn't matter. The reason I'm using the medium is because it will it actually help the um, paint to dry a little bit. There's another little example of stuff that happens that is worth looking for just there. And I think you can see it. I'm going to zoom in on that. So you can see that a little tree appeared there with uh, a bit of water next to it, maybe. So we'll, we'll keep that. Let's see whether we can do another one. Or another few. There we are. There's something there that looks keepable. So along, the, along that edge, what should we do? I think we'll pull that across there. Now you may say, why? Well, because I can. That's the main reason. Um, but I just think it would look right. And then let's have slightly bigger. Yeah, 
So the edge of a field just there. And then without adding white, I'll pull that across and see what happens there. Now I've got to get these angles right because it's um it's all related, you know, even though a lot of fields may be irregular, still got to keep your eye on the contrast. Make one mistake and it suddenly turns into amateur land. So I want to emphasize that corner a little bit. So I'm just going to put a little bit more of something sticking up there. That way I don't need to worry too much about that angle being exactly spot on. Now here, there's several ways of doing this. One is to put the paint on. I could use paper again, but I quite like that field. And that will ultimately have even more light hitting it. Possibly not in this sitting, but anyway. So here you can also use the brush like that and get textures that look actually quite interesting. And in fact, let's put a tiny bit of, and when I say tiny, I mean really tiny, tiny hint of brown into it. Because not all fields are pristine. Now, if I remember, I'll try to insert a photo here. If nothing happens, it means that I either forgot or I couldn't find a photo. But um, it's just an example of what a field looks like that's been agriculturally worked. Very rarely are they completely one flat colour. There's generally all kinds of textures in them. And that, that's they are the ones that I find particularly interesting. So if I just put, a, put the green down here, and it's literally just a stain. Because it's an oil painting, you see, it doesn't mean to say it has to be dripping in paint. It can be just enough colour to get the message across. Now, I've got to think about this field in the middle here. Do I want anything, I think, sometimes I think, not always, I quite like what's going on there, so I don't want to ruin that. And that's working quite nicely against the light. But I've got this feeling that I want to do this. And... I don't know whether it comes with the being a painter or artist, but when I feel I want to do something, I just do it usually. Um, I like that. I quite like that. I really like that. But I think, I think there should be something much taller there that actually breaks up right across. Why not? This is like a... English, I'm going to put a little spike on that one too. English medieval field type landscape. You know what I mean, don't you? Mm -hmm. Sort of small fields. It's like we've got a cow at the front there. Yes, yes. Where? <laughs> there. Oh, oh, right, yes, yes, I see it now. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think it's a llama. Oh, I don't, yeah, anyway, big, whatever it is. Um, so down here, let's let's just see what happens with the um, the brush doing the work for me. In other words, let's just make some texture there. Now this is this sort of technique was done by um, Constable Turner, you name them, they did it uh, just to get quick texture without uh, fussing around too much. You have to remember the artists back then. You see, were like they were the modern day graphic designers, they had to work quickly. They were commercial artists. They had to produce paintings as fast as possible to sell them. So any way that they could find to do stuff quickly, they would use it. So um, if the brush produces what you want, don't argue with it. We have an interesting shape here. I often do this. Now, I don't want to repeat. There, there are two, but that's, I think I'd get away with two. Three would definitely be too much. But I quite like that because that is a little eye catcher there. And I can turn it into a more of an eye catcher by putting white next to it. Not in this sitting, though. Um, I might be able to do it, but I, I, I would prefer to wait for this to dry off a bit. 
Now, there are some also, um, there are some little white spots there, and that's purely accidental, but it doesn't matter. If it looks okay, keep it. And I think we're nearly there, apart from a few things I'm going to do with the sky. I may also do a little bit more of this, this um, effect here. Let's just have a quick zoom in on that bit. Um, yeah, this effect here, Now I've, I've sort of isolated it a little bit too much. I think I should just expand that. Now then, so you can see the, um, the distance in the painting there. And I've got these, these marks here, but I think they're a little bit, uh, um, what's the word, contiguous. Contiguous? Were they? There's too many of them. That's in the right spot. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to I'm going to put some shorter marks in there just to break them down a bit. Not sure whether that actually worked, but I think no, it's okay. Right. So am I happy? Am I ever happy? Let's back off a bit and just have a look at these trees in the foreground. I'm just going to fiddle with them just a touch and put a bit of light into them. What I'm going to do here, we got quite an interesting, well, I think it's interesting, but of course I'm biased. Uh, I want to do a couple of things down here. I want, I want to introduce just a little bit of light in a few places there, just to exaggerate the slope in the land here. Now, these lines that I'm putting in, they will hint at um, the perspective in the field. You know, in other words, you've got lines gradually getting smaller as they go away. It's not obvious, but it's sort of, it's working enough anyway. But here, this tree, now I don't know these the species of tree. I always paint the same sort of tree, really. Um, I think the Latin name for it is um, Davisus weirdus. Uh, it's just a tree, it's a sort of generic tree. And uh, we just need a bit of light on it. So most, I don't usually worry about where the light comes from. Usually on clouds I do, because clouds, it can bounce around all over the place. But on the land, I suppose, if that's where the light is, down here, it's going to be more to this side of the tree. And I am not a leaf painter, so I'm just going to do a little bit of paperwork just on that side of the tree, just subtle enough to give it a little bit of form. We could also do a little bit down there. Maybe there's a bush catching a bit of light just there. This, of course, isn't the finished painting. There's going to be, um, there'll be a part two on this because I will add uh, a glaze not necessarily on the sky, but on the land, there'll be a reddish glaze right across the land, which uh, always works well with green. Whatever you do, don't make things too green. I mean, there are worse things you can do on this planet, but this, that's, that's high up on the list. You don't want your greens to be frightening, you know? So I'm going along the edges, softening. The thing about... Um, tonalism is that everything is slightly soft you don't go for much in the way of crisp but I'm I'm not a pure tonalist I'm a little bit of a mix between tonalist and impressionist although I do like entirely tonalist paintings down the bottom there we've got a gap through there we've got an accidental bit of a fence post of some kind. Maybe it's a gateway into the field. I certainly didn't paint it. It just sort of appeared. And this happens often. So, you know, we can paint a picture and suddenly something will turn up. And I have no idea where it came from. But there's also some accidental light around it, which looks quite alluring. So I'm going to just sort of just put a bit more light on it. Gives us somewhere to step in the picture. And we've got a couple of little pools of light there. Now, is that a light spot on a bush? I don't know. But um, what I'm going to do is just fiddle it until it looks like something a bit more convincing. 
In fact, I know what I'll do. I'll just add a bit more deliberate light just at the bottom there. And then break that across there. There we go. That sort of works. Now then, the sky. I'm just going to do a few touches of pink. And in fact, the really dark bit, oh, of course, you can't see what I'm pointing at. Um, the really dark bit of the sky will be put on again when I put on a red on the landscape, which doesn't mean to say it's all going to just turn to red, uh, just bits of it, just enough to give you a warm, a bit of a warm glow on that. Um, but I'd also probably put another glaze uh, just in that area, just to take that down a notch. Although I have to say it sort of works. I'm just going to remove this here. And what else am I going to do? So we've got, yeah, I think that's quite a nice little picture. Over there, I think I need to define what's going on. Now at the moment, you see you've got a few trees working way across there. Am I actually in the way? No, I'm not. Um, so what I'm going to do just to give it a little bit more structure, just put a bit of light to the left of the tree there and a bit of light there. That will bring the tree actually forward a bit more. So if I just sort of touch that, a bit too subtle. Like so. Not sure what it is. May not be anything, but I think it'll work. And then just continue that the other side. Just enough. Doesn't have to be too strong. Just enough to tell you that that light goes behind the tree. Just needs to be a little bit brighter. There, and this needs to be softened on the bottom edge. Yeah, so your brain will have to fiddle out, uh, fiddle out, no, that's wrong, figure out what is actually going on there. And let's have a little bit of light there. That's it, I think that's done. For now, at least, anyway. And tomorrow, because I will video it, uh, my student will paint something vaguely similar. So, what else am I? What else am I going to do before I shut this down? Well, the only thing I am going to say is, um, if you like this, uh, click the um, subscribe button and uh, hit the thumbs up thingy. That'll tell you when I put another video up. And leave a comment, or if you haven't got anything to say, leave a leave an emoji. But um, try and keep it polite. <laughs> um, what else? Yeah, if you want to come to a class, there'll be a link below to my um, classes. And if you want to, um, well, if you want to come here, I'm only, I'm only going to be doing probably for the foreseeable future, uh, three to four people a year, uh, because it's um, just, you know, that's all I can manage. Thanks. Um, so getting quick, I've already got two people for next year. So there's probably two spaces left, I think. And uh, yeah, I hope you've learned something, hope you enjoyed it, and uh, see you next time. So bye for now.